Welcome back to Violating Community, Community Guidelines. Guidelines with Brittany and Sarah Shower. And today we're going to be talking about clickbait. We all know it. We all love it. Mm -hmm. It's all in our bones, in our blood. <laughs> yes. From the moment <laughs> we started being online, everyone has encountered clickbait, for better or worse. Thank you, David Dobrik, for your contributions to the history of the internet. Mm -hmm. um, Sarah is... Having anxiety, dude. I have a, a frozen bag of edamame on my stomach <laughs> and then a frozen ice pack on my chest, a glasses and a sun hat on, a fucking hat on. You look great. Thank you so much. It's like weird because my heart is racing, but I am objectively tired. So you it's- Googled on the way here, like <laughs> symptom, like what is going on? First one, cancer. Yeah. Second one is like arrhythmia and then like heart attack. And then the other one was like anxiety disorder. And I was like, <laughs> you might just I know. be a little nervous. I just like, I've had like trouble sleeping. And every time I take like a sleeping pill, like help me, it gets me like four hours. Mm. And then I can't fall back asleep. And then I'm just like, I can't take another one because then I'll wake up in like, you know, 12 hours. Mm -hmm. If you're taking Delta 8, no. That shit will put you on your ass. <laughs> what is it? It's like one step lower from THC. It like doesn't technically have THC in it. I could be talking on my ass. My mom gave it to me one time. Yeah. <laughs> it just like, it's a, it helps you sleep. It's supposed to get you a little high. Uh -huh. It's like what people in the South use to get high, like edibles. Is it like CBD? A little bit. Yeah. Um, I took one one time at like 9 p.m., woke up the next morning at 10 a.m. Didn't fucking move. Slept like a rock. <laughs> I'm going to buy you some Delta 8 from Amazon. Woke up with bed sores. <laughs> <laughs> full body rash on the yeah. back side of me whenever you take that you send like a automated like text to me at like 3 a.m to like flip you over <laughs> <laughs> like a sausage patty it is. it is i'm gonna get you some delta 8 all right so clickbait is an internet slang term for online media or news content with, with sensationalist headlines that are produced by websites for the sole purpose of accumulating page views to generate advertising revenue it is typically used as a pejorative for viral media and stories that spread through social networking sites despite their perceived lack of depth, quality, authenticity, or accuracy, a.k.a. L content. That's what Stanley said. Stanley wrote that. Stanley thinks of the world as a binary, W's and L's, <laughs> and he lets us know when something is an L and something is a W. Yes. So thank you for your contributions, Stanley. Do clickbait. You, oh, go I was going to ask you, like, do you fall for like clickbait often? Oh. All the time. <laughs> yes. You know what, too? I'm at the point now. I put it later on in the research, but I'm at the point now where I feel like it is so woven into the fabric of YouTube. Yeah. That if something is not clickbait, I don't click on it. Yeah. Like, it's literally like that. I follow some YouTubers that still to this day are like, I got robbed at the nail salon. And I watch it and she's just like. She accidentally clicked 25% tip instead of 20 <laughs> yes. and they wouldn't like refund her because like, what the fuck? Yeah. And, like, I watch those videos knowing that's how it's going to go versus, like, watching a video that has a normal-ass title that's probably an entertaining video. I just don't click on it because yeah. I'm so, like, brainwashed into thinking that. Do you let that affect how you title your YouTube videos? Kind of, yeah. I mean, I all I do is, like, mainly all caps. Um, but, I mean, not all caps, but, like, capitalize, like, every... I do Word. that too. I think it just looks nice though. Yeah. I don't think that's clickbait. But I mean like I don't really have any like video topics where it's like I roast, you know, Paris Hilton alive yeah. or like something like that. It's like I build a tiger <clears throat> butthole Lego set. Now see that is uh, uh, honorable clickbait I would say. Because well, you honor it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And But I mean like I did put on the thumbnail like tiger hole question mark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like why did you do that? Because they're, the Lego set included like a little tiger butthole. <laughs> Like, they put a little pink cute. bottle, and it's it so cute. That's why I bought the set. Yeah. But it's weird that the brain immediately goes to, like, need to show the most outrageous part of this video. Yeah. It's like, you don't technically have to. I look back on some videos I've titled, and I'm like, I know that that's why this got that many views. But, yeah. like, I wouldn't do that today because I feel cringe. Yeah. Anyway. Clickbait headlines add an element of dishonesty. Yeah. Using enticements that do not accurately reflect the content being delivered. And I think that is... Something we're addicted to. Yeah. In both, like, me speaking as a consumer of YouTube. I'm addicted to the, like, what's it gonna be? Yeah. You know, like, you'll never, guess what? We found this at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> Not a good example, actually, because that shit is really, like, 
exciting. Yes. <laughs> like, found this in my car. <laughs> it's like, what? It's just garbage, dude. It's a deep sea creature. <laughs> <laughs> it's an anemone. <laughs> in the trunk of my sedan. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's like, then I'd watch and be like, what the fuck yeah, is that in your car? Throw that shit in the thumbnail. <laughs> yes. I'm on it. But it's usually just like a roll of quarters. People are like, remember when these were around? Yes. Not anything click, like, I don't know. It's so woven into it, though. It's like I can't not <laughs> click it. Yeah. But there are some that I don't give a fuck about. Jake Paul, David Dobrik type. The, I, my roll of, or my, my, my brain just pooped out. <laughs> I didn't even notice. <laughs> I'm so anxious. <laughs> I'm so, <laughs> I thought I was fucking up. <laughs> you thought I was glitching. Yeah. Um, what was I say? Oh, when Jake Paul would do like motorcycles over a pool on fire with like possums in the bottom. It's yeah. just like, I don't find that shit entertaining in the slightest i more so like i want the tea i am such a sucker do you watch tea channels yes I, i'll do that mm-hmm. you'll never guess what gabby hannah did i'm like well bitch i need to know yeah so i'll click it well i think like with jake paul types like their clickbait is not even like it's clickbait but it's also like what's actually happening it's like when yeah. you watch a trailer that like gives away the plot right like he's like jumping over like if you wouldn't guess like what we did in someone's backyard but he has it like we jumped you know a boat on fire over someone's like hot tub gotta see this you already gave it away in the title so i'm like i mean i kind of want to see it but i already know what happens right yeah I'm at the point where I don't even want to see it. Yeah. The thumbnail gave it away. I've seen too many boats on fire. I'm just like, I don't give a shit anymore. Yeah, do something new. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. We've all done that. Been there, done that. The bait part of the term makes an analogy with fishing. Get it? Mm-hmm. Where a hook is disguised by an enticement, bait, presenting the impression to the fish that it is a desirable thing to swallow. And Stanley comments, sus? Do you think I don't? This is I don't know if this makes sense, but like you know, bait on a hook and then a fish swims up. Honestly, if someone had like a hot dog on like a rope in like, a public pool, <laughs> I'd be like, <laughs> I'd kind of swim up to it and I'd be like hungry. <laughs> Talkie, <laughs> it's the I'm first, there. first floor of the mall. <laughs> someone like slowly lowers a boba. Hell yeah, I'm latching <laughs> onto that. <laughs> Imagine you jiggling by your fucking <laughs> neck. <laughs> Your arms just flaccid at your side. Why doesn't she just let go? <laughs> just grab it with your hand. Yes. So the origin of clickbait is the earliest known use of the term was in a blog post by corporate systems advisor Jay Geiger. Love him. On <laughs> <December>. <laughs> hey, number one Jay Geiger stands yes. right here. On December 1st, 2006, in the post, he defined clickbait as any content or feature within a website that quote unquote baits a viewer to click. And then anything interesting enough to catch a person's attention. That has been bastardized. Yes. Anything will catch my attention now. Literally. But can you hold it is the question. <laughs> no. Can you can you coddle the fire of my attention? That yeah. was the entire concept behind Vine is that like they did studies where like you can't really hold people's attention for more than six seconds. That's <laughs> so sad. <laughs> We're so stupid that they're like <laughs> that we can't make the videos longer. <laughs> but yep. more often than not, clickbait uses highly alternative text phrasing, uh, controversial slogans and ideas, or culturally inspirational de- descriptions slash events. Clickbait is similar to link bait, but is generally seen as le- less effective, more short-sighted, and more short-lived. The question is now, what is link bait? Good <laughs> question. I will answer that. Link bait is a term referring to content geared towards getting individuals to link to it or share it. For search engine optimization, SEO purposes. Do you remember that trend on TikTok that was like, be sure to uh, share copy link yeah. to like, let's get this video viral, guys. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. Like, it, you're not even sending it to people. You're just like tricking TikTok into thinking that you're sharing it with people. Yeah. When people found out you don't actually have to share it into a text and send the text. No, you just have to, you know, juke out, yeah. as you would say. Literally. TikTok, yeah. You got to juke TikTok. <laughs> if you want to go viral, be sure to juke out TikTok. <laughs> That's the advice here today. Um, I was trying to think of something earlier, like uh, clickbait that I've fallen for. Well, not fallen for, but like... I always the only thing I can really think of is like a Twitter like click hole things, but that's mm. something that purposely makes like clickbait. I'll show you a click hole. <laughs> 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 Um, but I was also thinking of like, you know, there's single MILFs in your area. Is that You're considered- clicking on them? <laughs> no, yeah. I'm over them every time. <laughs> no, I mean like I mean like um, is that clickbait? Like yeah. single MILFs in your area? If I was a brand new user to the internet, yeah. and I was hornier than a motherfucker, <laughs> yes. and I'm looking for MILFs online, yeah, I'm clicking on that. 
<laughs> it's just because you and I have been desensitized to it. But it sounds like you're still clicking on it. <laughs> just, I have so many viruses on my computer right now. <laughs> you said in a previous episode your laptop runs like a 2003 Nokia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that will do. Hola a todos. Soy yo, Brittany. Everyone, it's me, Brittany. And yes, thank you for asking. I do speak Spanish. I was actually just in Spain for a concert a few weeks ago. And let me tell you, there is a magic in being able to speak the language of whatever country you find yourself in. Now, for all of your summer travels, whether you're going abroad or staying domestic and want to immerse yourself in the culture, now is the perfect time to start Babbel. Babbel is the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions, me being one of them. Thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons, there's still time to learn a new language before you reach your destination. With Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson, so you can start having real-life conversations in a new language in as little as three weeks. You'll be a little rusty, but it'll get you where you need to go. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 150 language experts. Now with Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including, but not limited to, Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Plus, comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. So start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, save up to 60% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash vcg. That's babbel.com slash vcg for up to 60% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. Hey y'all, it's me, Brittany, coming to you on a pre-recorded voice memo to tell you about Thrive Cosmetics. Cause, C-A-U-S-E, is in the name for a reason. Every purchase supports organizations that help communities thrive. Thrive Cosmetics is a line of high-performance beauty and skincare products made with clean, skin-loving ingredients. No parabens, sulfates, or phthalates, spelled P-H-T-H-A-L-A-T-E-S. All right, I did go to college. They're certified 100% vegan and cruelty-free, and I personally love the Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara, which, to no surprise, is their best-selling product with over 20,000 five-star reviews. It mimics the look of those uh, salon lash extensions without the damaging glue or expensive salon prices. It lasts all day without clumping, smudging, or flaking, and I sometimes subconsciously like mess with my lashes throughout the day. The mascara never budges. It also comes off super easy. The formula slides right off with just warm water and a washcloth. No soap required. How do they do it? It's got the Brittany Broski stamp of approval here, guys. Like I mentioned before, Thrive Cosmetics is bigger than beauty. And for every product purchased, Thrive Cosmetics donates to help communities thrive. They've got over 300 giving partners across the country supporting numerous different causes. So now is a great time to try Thrive Cosmetics for yourself. Right now you can get 15% off your first order when you visit thrivecosmetics.com slash VCG. That's Thrive Cosmetics, C-A-U-S-E-M-E-T-I-C-S dot com slash vcg for 15 percent off your first order thanks y'all oh yeah this is uh, what's that old timey like calculator an atticus yeah is that what it's actually an atticus called finch <laughs> it's called a are you talking about the thing that goes like abacus. this <laughs> what's that thing that, that's a um oh no dude the where that's perpetual motion i don't know what it like it's, it's Perpetual motion is <laughs> Yes, Great song. In Atticus Finch to do your <laughs> calculus. <laughs> no, I don't even... I was going to say that my computer runs like an abacus, but it, you know what? The joke is so far beaten into the no, ground. No, I get it, though. That's funny. <laughs> yes. That's funny. An analog computer. <laughs> <Yes>. Dial-up. <laughs> my computer is less powerful than the computer that took the first spaceship to like the moon. <laughs> Your computer is a big room this yes. size. You have a clipboard and you're constantly doing maintenance yes. on it. Uh, so before the internet, a marketing practice known as bait and switch used similar dishonest methods to hook customers. In extreme degree, like bait and switch, clickbait is a form of fraud. 
Mm -hmm. There are no single MILFs in my area. No, there never are. (laughs) Where are they? Where are you guys? Hey, single MILFs, please hit my line. (laughs) Please understand that just because a woman is older doesn't make her a MILF. I want to. Actually, that was going to be really creepy. Wait, what? (laughs) You gotta cut you off. (laughs) (laughs) Well, no, a MILF is a mom I'd like to fuck, not an older woman I'd like to fuck. That's an oif. Oilf? Oilf. Oilf. You know what? (laughs) Anyone. If anyone can be daddy, anyone can be a mommy. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> a lot of these, a lot of these daddies don't even have kids. Freud is looking down from, looking up from hell. <laughs> Freud is yes. like a fly vomiting on his food and rubbing his hands. Well, him. like I mean, with like the prevalence of like mommy daddy issues, like I feel like Freud would have like a field day. Like I would love. It. He'd be like, I told you, bitches. I fucking told <laughs> you, you guys. guys. Or like how you'll go on TikTok and guys are like, my perfect woman is my mom. Freud is literally rubbing one out right now. <laughs> Freud has a pussy. Sorry. Freud has a Facebook support group. <laughs> okay, sorry guys. Um, so click fraud, however, is a separate form of online misrepresentation, which uses an extreme disconnect between what is being presented in the front side of the link versus what is on the click through side of the link, also encompassing malicious code. Yes, yeah, so all the uh, bugs and stuff, yeah, the viruses. Like you, I've gotten I've gotten some fishy uh, p h i s. Yeah, yeah. emails from youtube.com actually that are like your account activity is da 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 and I'm like what and then I look at it and it literally it's like youtube.com slash <laughs> like eff- effective power aliens like yes. symbols and I'm like fuck <laughs> I was like I almost fell for that because you click on that shit and if you ever do the thing where it's like I don't, I don't know how to describe it but you copy the actual text and post it into a a new tab it's like error 404 yeah but if you click on like reveal the url and you it takes you there like you can see what it is without actually clicking it it's always like some scam website so that's i've almost done that before but i'm smart I just forward the email to my mom and be like, mom, click this and tell me what it says. Mom, I need help. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, yeah, I get that. Um, it's always like you, like there's weird account activity, but then you look at the email. It's like Smith at gmail.com. Yeah. <laughs> I love when it's a name. <laughs> yes. Like, what are you doing, man? Yes. You don't even hide yourself. You got your government name in your fucking email, dude. <laughs> it's not even YouTube official at like <laughs> no, gmail.com. It's not. <laughs> yes. it's not. Trust me, I'm YouTube.com. <laughs> yes. No. Um, uh, so click fraud. Yeah, so click fraud is different. What's an example of click fraud? <laughs> would that you say? Oh, okay. Is, it's like your bank activity is. That's another one. It's like please check your ba- your account activity. It's Wells Fargo. You click on it, and it's some uh, website they've built to look like the Wells Fargo interface. You enter your account information, your login. They've got it, dude. Yeah. And it's like well, it won't let me log in. Yeah. Because they've got it. They've yeah. That's okay. click fraud. That's only really happened with me with my Neopets. Where, well, actually, they that got was, your ass. Yeah, they did, yeah. They took your fucking kids from you. Well, they, they said that I they would help me do something, and then I gave them my login, and then they just logged me out of my account. They got your ass, <laughs> and shit. And all my, all my kids died. Yeah. <laughs> um, Were Neopets, it, was it like, I was never a Neopets girl. Was it like Webkins where you raised them? Yeah, and they'd be like, um, it have like their like status, like health levels, like hasn't eaten in like 3,000 days. <laughs> 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 Your Nintendogs just yes. dying dead. Well, I actually don't think Neopets can die. I think they can just live in this perpetual state <laughs> of, of <hunger>. starvation. Yes. <laughs> Thinking of all the Neopets in purgatory. Yes. Just near death. It is hell. Um, the term clickbait does not encompass all cases where the user arrives at a destination that is not anticipated from the link that is clicked. So the spread of the term clickbait... Began on October 30th, 2012, when Urban Dictionary user John Pryor submitted an entry for clickbait, defining it as web content designed to encourage clicks for advertising revenue. On October 15th, 2013, College Humor published a compilation of book covers photoshopped with clickbait titles. So for everyone at home, uh, College Humor, like Brittany said, published a compilation of book covers photoshopped with clickbait titles. And the first one, if you'd like to read it, speaking of Atticus Finch. That's actually weird. That is so crazy. Is that why I said that? Because I looked at this earlier and I was thinking about To Kill a Mockingbird. Well, I mean, anyone would think Atticus Finch when you say Atticus. There was a character in My Babysitter's a Vampire named Atticus. I would have never known that. (laughs) The girls that know, (laughs) no. 
Um, but yeah, so this one is from College Humor. It says, it's a parody of To Kill a Mockingbird. It says, still think racism doesn't exist? Read this and tell me when you when your jaw hits the floor. So good. That was really good. This is another one. Very millennial moment. Another one is a parody <laughs> of Harry Potter that says, this, period, yes, period. That's a mood. <laughs> yes. uh, when your doggo literally is house Hufflepuff, that's a mood. <laughs> Dude, the other day, um, I was at my friend's house who speaks Polish, and I, again, not simil- a real language. similarly had not slept, and I was, like, out of my mind, and I picked up all their Harry Potter books, and all the words were jumbled, <laughs> and I was like, I'm actually having a stroke right now. Turns out all the titles were in Polish, so I was, <laughs> uh, so I was like, Vierta <laughs> Zai, and I was like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Harry Potter's Vierta, and I was like, what the shit does this mean? <laughs> oh, no, it's just Polish. And then this one is a Fifty Shades of Grey knockoff that says, <laughs> people fucking this. Yes. That's it's very millennial. Yeah. Speak for your people. people. What do you think? I've actually never seen Fifty Shades of Grey. Me either, and I feel like I would love it. I mean, I love psychological thrillers. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I can't stop. I love historical fiction. <laughs> <laughs> You know, in the last episode when you were like, um, (laughs) when we were like fucked up like Mel Gibson and uh, Mel Brooks. Brooks. Yeah, you're like Mel Brooks in The Passion of the (laughs) Pious, his comedy debut, Mel Gibson. Yeah. 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 That stuck with me. I love when I make you laugh. It's such a victory. (laughs) Dude, everyone in the with the Connor and Brooke episode were like, was they thought you were having a terrible time. I have told everyone a million times I have ADHD, and now there's three people talking to me. I am doing my utmost best to like maintain fair. Yeah, that's why I kept trying to like direct the conversation because if you guys, if you all got lost, I would get lost. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And then yes, I I like Connor, and I've hung around straight men. He's one of the tolerable ones, I would say. I thought you were going to say taller ones. I was like, he's my height. Yeah. But he is one of the more tolerable ones. He's a very nice boy. Moving on. In August of 2014, clickbait was added to the Oxford English Dictionary. Hey. W internet people. They've had a monopoly on the dictionary business for forever now. Yeah. Who even is Oxford? (laughs) He fucking sucks. Is it like, do they mean like the university? Probably. Oh. Boo. Okay. On October 3rd, the Epic News YouTube channel uploaded a video titled, This Video Will Change Your Life. Wait, wait, let me be a millennial for for a second. Please. On October 3rd, Epic News uploaded a channel. Wait, so you know like on October 3rd he asked me what day it was? Fuck, I couldn't even get through it because of my anxiety. Do you want to try again? No. (laughs) (laughs) On October 3rd, he asked me what day it was. On October 3rd, you'll never guess what happened. (laughs) I said it. The Epic News YouTube channel uploaded a video titled, This Video Will Change Your Life. Which On October 3rd, the <laughs> Epic News YouTube channel uploaded a video titled, This Video Will Change Your Life. Which cited several examples of clickbait in online media and mock sites like Upworthy for using cheap tricks to generate page views. Several major online news sites and aggregation sites. Aggregation sites. What does farming have to do with this? Hard word. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've been criticized for employing cl- clickbait tactics, including Upworthy, The Huffington Post, Gawker, and BuzzFeed, among many others. BuzzFeed is notorious. Um, do you remember that video that they did that was like, this man has never tried fruit? Uh, no. No? I've never seen that. That sh- I'm literally going to look at No, I'm not. It was this video <laughs> of this guy that was like, this guy's never had fruit. Yeah. He was like 28. Do you think that he was trying to be quirky? Like when someone's like, I've never done that. And it's like something that everyone should have done already. I literally think so, yes, because this dude was way too old to like never have had a fucking strawberry. <laughs> yes. Are you li- like, are you kidding? He sits down and he's like, what is this? Yes. This looks gross. I was like, he's never even been in a grocery store. No. He's like, Ugh, it's a grape. Yes. Ugh, the texture. <laughs> it's a grape. Have you seen that um, TikTok where this guy has only drank uh, water and milk his entire life? Me. <laughs> and then he like he like tries like sodas and like monster. He's like, well, it's no milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the better. Yes. <laughs> wow. 
Uh, but yeah, the guy who's yeah. The, did you write that the guy who never tried fruit? Yeah. Sir, you're 28. Yeah. That's. I feel like you would have some like sort of skin condition if you've never eaten fruit. If you've never, th- that is true. If you've also only drinking milk in your life, <laughs> cystic acne. Yes. Just like you touch him and like pimples just pop on his face. <laughs> Fucking gross. Um, do you want to talk about click hole? Uh, Clickhole is a parody website created by the satirical news site The Onion to mock clickbait content featured on blogs like Upworthy and BuzzFeed. Upworthy headlines are parody titles that mock those used for content, highlighted on the viral media site Upworthy, which are often criticized for using the clickbait techniques to grab the viewer's attention and increase page views. And Stanley linked a website for old people to understand what clickbait is. And then he wrote sad AF. Yeah, it really is. Well, I mean, a lot of older people are, you know, technologically illiterate in the way that I'm just illiterate in general. Yeah, we're working on that. We're doing weekly lessons. But the website says, like, what is clickbait? If you've spent time on the Internet, you've likely seen articles and images with headlines like the examples above, they're just small sample. Like clickbait is a sensational. Oh my god, clickbait is a sensationalized headline that encourages you to click a link to an article, image, or video. Instead of presenting objective facts, clickbait headlines often appeal to your emotions and curiosity. I think this just goes back to like how adults always told us that we shouldn't talk to people online but now like the people who are in the most danger online are adults yeah the amount of times that my dad has gotten his credit card stolen yep. online is yeah. just embarrassing you know why it's because they didn't see dicks on omegle <laughs> it all goes back to omegle you were not um shown a penis yes. over the world wide web at the ripe age of 11 and that's why you fall for internet scam you're too trusting you're too trusting Someone on Omegle said, I'm not going to show you my penis. And then they showed the penis. <laughs> and that's when you learn not to trust anyone exactly. on the internet. Yeah. No, I'm not going to rub one out on the... <laughs> yes. They do every time. I'm literally doing that right now. Yeah. No, I so I looked up some click hold titles. Uh, one of them says, 90s kids rejoice. The spider eggs they used to fill Beanie Babies are finally hatching. <laughs> 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 Did you ever have Beanie Babies? Yeah. I had a lot of them. I thought my parents, my parents have like them still in boxes because they think that they're like super valuable. Do you think they ever will be? I mean, I think they are kind of. I think it has to be like the, you know, the century bear, the one that's purple and it has like the white roses on it for like the, you know, turn of the century. How much is the century Beanie Baby worth? Century Beanie Baby. We'll just check my dashboard when we're done. <laughs> <laughs> The Beanie Bear money. Oh, $495. Sick. Oh, my God. It's more than rent. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Princess the Bear has been alluded to be worth over $500,000. She was introduced in 1997. Why didn't we save these? I know Barbie dolls are super... um... Yeah, I always thought Trixie was so fucking weird for having, like, so many Barbie dolls, which she is. Don't get me wrong. Weird. You're a grown man that likes Barbies and you like dress up like a woman. Get help, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but I've I've always th- but like there's such a um, community around the collectors. Yeah, who, like genuinely give a fuck about that stuff. Ooh, the craziest um, collecting group I think is like Pyrex. Have you seen those? They're like people. Like the who, Tupperware. Yeah, like Tupperware people who like collect that shit. It's worth like hundreds of thousands or thousands of dollars. Why? I have no like from idea. The 50s? Um, I mean, yeah, 50s through now. Googling. I have a um, a bag of frozen edamame on my stomach right now, and it's pretty much heated up all the way, so I think I could probably eat it in the next hour. Can I have some? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> yes. Some vintage Pyrex can earn up to $3,000. Yeah. And That's also, wild. like, Ray Dunn, too. Like, you can collect that. Huh. I just collect um, asbestos. <laughs> yes. That's yes. actually really hard to come by. It is. I send it to my enemies. <laughs> but then you collect it in the meantime. Yeah. <laughs> just on my nightstand. <laughs> just <gasps> at night snoring, <laughs> sucking it in. <laughs> you bitches, I'll get you. <laughs> Why is Brittany on a ventilator now? <laughs> it's all the asbestos she collects. <laughs> it's a passion. It's a generational passion. Um, so I'm on the Clickhole website right now. I wanted to look at more examples. <laughs> There's one with the picture of the queen that says, I am jealous of the homeless by Queen Elizabeth II. It's good. Yeah. Sorry. I think that's so funny. Um, 
Then there's a picture of a sick kid that says, guess we have to believe him. This adorable <laughs> six-year-old boy who had a near-death experience and saw God is absolutely vehement that Eastern European people are not allowed in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking good. I just love the guess we have to believe them. <laughs> yeah, yes. um, there's another one that says, an end to 113 years of bloodshed. Miriam Webster and Oxford English Dictionary have finally agreed that a patio is an area adjoining a house used for outdoor lounging. Again with the Oxford Dictionary stuff. Yeah, and who is Miriam Webster? <laughs> yes. I would believe her. She's a woman. Miriam That's Webster. probably just two last names. Yes. Like Miriam. a law firm. <laughs> the law firm of <laughs> Miriam <laughs> Webster and Son. Yes. Miriam Webster is an American company that publishes reference books and is especially known for its dictionaries. George and Charles Merriam founded the company. Interesting. Who's Webster? Yeah, who is Webster? Hmm. Isn't that that, um, that bird or something? Webster. Oh, I was thinking of the pig, Charlotte's Web. Never mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> dude, my brain's <laughs> at 12%. Do you think the Oxford... English dictionary is like the British spelling of stuff and Merriam Webster is the American spelling of stuff, like American English. Yeah, it's like the New King James versus like the old King James. <laughs> Did you grow up reading New King James version? <laughs> um, yeah, actually. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Holy shit. Did you I mean that's not that uncommon for Baptist churches to read the New King James. Well, it, in service. <laughs> but like my little practice Bible, like my precious moments Bible yeah. was like whatever it's called. Mm-hmm. For hip hip cool kids oh yeah 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 like the sunday like the fun sunday school version yeah where there's like activities and like you yeah. know drawings stickers <laughs> yes. yeah. i like the idea of like there's a uh, like a british dictionary where they translate it to english but it's like american <laughs> english yeah and there's a bunch of like contractions now <laughs> y'all well it's true you would never say y'all in britain i feel like they would like ironically to make fun of us? Yeah. I mean, if we use their accent to, like, make fun of them, they probably use our accent to make fun of but us. But enough to incorporate it into a dictionary? <laughs> I don't know, dude. I feel like sometimes we're two dodo birds. We are. Like, I feel I lose myself in our conversations, and I'm like, what the? No, we definitely are dodo birds. Our bloodline should have died out by now. <laughs> I'm the last <laughs> of my <laughs> bloodline. There goes our last female. <laughs> 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 okay. The lighthouse <laughs> melon. <laughs> Wait, I want to read some more examples from Clickhole News. Texas A and M had a um, version of the Onion that I applied to write for. Yeah, rejected. <laughs> <laughs> rejected. Didn't even get into it. Um, uh, wait, what did you have to, like, do? Because I know I've done that before, where, like, you have to submit, like, three fake titles or yeah, something like that. Yeah, I had like to that. do that, and I had to answer some questions, and, like, it basically was, like, prove to us that you're witty. <laughs> yeah. And I, I was like, this is so, <laughs> this is so good. Rejected. Yes. Whatever, dude. The title is just, like, I look like Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> yeah, it's just bits I keep doing. <laughs> Why didn't like, I get it? Fuck me. They're all about me. Yes. Like, this isn't about the school, Brittany. We need to... This Whatever. is so specific. Howdy, it's Brittany from the hit podcast, Violating Community Guidelines, starring Brittany Broski and Sarah Shower. Thanks for listening on your television, laptop, or mobile device. Speaking of mobile devices, y'all better have a case protecting it, because I'm not buying y'all another one if you drop it. You bring, I told you already once. But if you're a listener of this podcast, you need a cute case. All right, it can't be some ugly, bulky, plastic one that's going to make your phone look gross and embarrass me, okay? That's why I love Case Defy. Protection, sustainability, and style in a pot. Mix it around. That's Case Defy, brother. Case Defy's Ultra Impact Crush cases are some of the most protective, unique cases on the market. Engineered with innovative shock absorption, patented technology, cheat tech, 2.0. These cases are drop proof up to 9.8 feet. 
Every detail is fine-tuned for optimal 360-degree protection and ultra-slim style, like me. And their signature camera ring, which you see all over Instagram and mirror selfies, is designed to not just look good, but also protect your precious camera lens. Go figure. Case device cases are super eco-friendly. Their crush cases are made from 65% recycled and plant-based materials. They're actually made in part from old phone cases that have been shredded and repurposed, which is reflected in the unique little speckled glitter look of the protection bumper. They have tons of prints and designs to choose from, and if you still can't find the one, you can always design your own customized case. These cases are perfect for yourself, and perfect is a sweet personalized gift as well. Case device got you covered. Get one of the most protective, cool-looking, and environmentally friendly phone cases the internet has to offer. Go to casetify.com and use my code 15BCG or use the link in my description box to get 15% off your Case Defy order. That is 15% off with my code 15VCG at casetify.com. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. I want to read more. So this one is a picture of rocks. Um, and then it says, is 2022 the year that rocks finally start helping out? <laughs> That's good. It's crystals. We're in the, we're in the, when crystals have their time, then normal rocks will have their time. Do you believe in the healing power of crystals? I'm not going to say no. Yeah. But I'm not going to say yes. Do you, doesn't, isn't rose quartz to like make you fall in love? Wait, yeah. I'm going to put crystal powers. <laughs> I charge my rose quartz on the sun. I want to know what that actually does. Like it does it are are you, are people being literal when they say like the crystals like have healing powers? Um, hold on, I'm farting. No, no. That's gonna smell like cat. I'm literally already lightheaded <laughs> and having heart palpitations. No, you're about to have lung problems. <laughs> oh, it smells like poop. I'm sorry. <laughs> Stop! I can't, and I can't even zoom in on anything on my computer. Uh, my mom says that um i've got a couple salt lamps in my room yeah she has salt lamps all over her house and she says that when negative energy when when the crystals are cleansing the air which is what they're supposed to do Uh uh-huh of negativity and like bad vibes it releases salt it like sheds salt Mm -hmm. because that's what it's made of and so all around the ones in her house there's like little salt crystals all around it. and so she's like see it's working yeah and i'm like i it's don't just know dandruff everywhere is that or like is it dust just falling off of it or something but it literally is salt like she picked it up and the issue was like that salt and i was like yeah it is and so i looked at mine in my room mine don't do that yeah i was like is your house just super like moist <laughs> <laughs> or something like that i, I feel don't like no she lives in texas right yeah i mean it could be the moisture in the air you know um because then like i don't know like evaporation and then condensation Literally, it's, it's, i was like this is something scientific i don't think this is the rock acting as a brita filter for bad vibes how many bad vibes are in your house <laughs> like, yeah, Jesus. Mom, mom fuck me she's going through crystal lamps <laughs> yes. they're whittled down to like a little stub it's you mom yeah i was like i don't know if that's the case i would like to believe though yeah that'd be so super sick if Mm -hmm. it was true that would be cool i mean i looked up a couple i couldn't really zoom in because my computer's being weird but like apparently citrine is for like optimism turquoise is supposed to be grounding yeah i um there's a shop on melrose that's called house of intuition or something like that me and emmy went there one time and i got a couple stones and some manifestation candles those bitches worked yeah so what did you manifest creativity and money You've never had that before. No. It's just crazy that they worked like that. It worked. Yes. You can't tell me it didn't work. <laughs> Were you already like d- <coughs> deep within your career when you got those candles? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, holy <gasps> shit. <laughs> yes. Hey, what can I tell you? No, but there's also like amethyst for sincerity and then tiger's eye for harmonizing. Who is sitting around like, damn, wish I was more sincere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sleep with this rock in my hand. Was that a lie too? <laughs> Also, like, Tiger's Eye for harmonizing. And just imagine, like, a show choir director gives out, like, a bunch of Tiger's <laughs> Eye. <laughs> this is for the altos. It's a pitch corrector. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You hold it. You just perfect pitch. <laughs> you put it in your saxophone as you're yes. playing. Don't know why I did this for a saxophone. <laughs> the saxophone and trombone. trombone. Right. There's just something rattling around in the trombone. <laughs> you sound terrible. You're out of the band. It's the Tiger's Eye. <laughs> <laughs> it's stuck in there. I can't get it out. He inhales it. Yeah. 
All right, so we're going to keep moving on. Uh, the psychology of clickbait. <laughs> I think people are just easily fooled. I'm just going to, like... I am easily fooled. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I will identify with that. Dude, I know that, like, uh, if you spill oil on the ground, like, it's it's not good for the environment, but it looks so pretty, mm. you know? Yeah. And I'll play in it. <laughs> <laughs> I just spatter around in the oil. Did you grow up in a rail yard or something? (laughs) We used to play in some little oil spatters on the ground. Just my favorite activity as a child. Do you remember the movie Robot? (laughs) Yes, I do. Do you know what I'm about to say? I thought, uh, no, actually. <laughs> that scene where he's like, I'm singing in the oil. <laughs> yes. so he's like spinning around the light pole. That I, was you. I love Aunt Fanny. Yeah. I like that her butt is so big. You know, Fanny in the UK means pussy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so if they made that uh, movie British, they'd have to move her ass to the front. <laughs> <laughs> Aunt Camel Toe. <laughs> yes. Aunt Moose Knuckle. Aunt Pussy. <laughs> Aunt Pussy. No, no, no. I hate when Aunt Pussy comes. Oh, and she also hits people with her ass, uh, hitting people with your pussy. Uh, rubs on your shoulder. Yes. Oh, I'm going to vomit, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. Your fucking clit comes into the room before you do. Oh, come on. <laughs> All right. There isn't just one answer to the question. But let's cover one of the reasons we can't seem to resist clickbait. We humans are drawn to seek out information in our world because it has survival value. Or I have a liz- lizard brain. Yes. <laughs> so it's like, you'll never believe I won't yes. click. <laughs> This just reminds me of like horror movies when everyone's like white people always want to investigate. Yeah. I think yeah, white people are just so fucking stupid. White people want to watch Jake Paul. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's in our blood. Yes. Uh, we forage for information much in the way our ancestors forage for food. <laughs> I'm like scrolling the internet ravenously, like a, my ancestors look for berries. Single milf, single milf. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, yeah, so this is hardwired into us. Clickbait is the promise that unbelievable, provocative, or shocking information will be revealed if we just click that link. I would say the success rate of that is about 25%. Yeah. 25% of the time I'm clicking on clickbait and I'm genuinely shocked or surprised by what I'm seeing. Yeah. Would you agree? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, for the most (coughs) part, it's like they give it away mostly in the title. Yeah. Or they like seriously uh, fuck up. Like, I don't know. Yeah. They misconstrued what's happening in the story. Yeah. But I guess that's the entire concept behind clickbait. Yeah. Um, Our dopamine reward system is involved in our motivation to learn about the world. Dopamine, comma, a hormone, thanks Stanley, <laughs> is involved in pleasure and it has many functions. Uh, while this is certainly nuanced and can get very technical, there is a body of research suggesting that dopamine incentivizes behavior more through wanting, called incentive salience, than liking. The salience witch trials. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's where they cleaned out everyone's eyes. <laughs> the salience. Yeah. Saline wash. Wait, so the dopamine incentivizes behavior more through wanting than liking? Yeah, yeah, like I feel like that's the same for like jealousy. You know, the you'd need rather, to know. Yeah. You'd rather be like jealous of someone than like them. You know, like be happy for them, right. sort of thing. Right. Yeah. Crabs in a bucket. Yes. Pulling each other down. You ever heard that? No. No? <laughs> no. That's a saying. Crabs in a bucket. They say women are like crabs in a bucket. When you see another woman, like, hotter than you or more successful than you or whatever, uh-huh. you have to pull her down. Oh, okay. Because something evil in crabs, I guess. <laughs> yes. I don't actually know the science behind that. <laughs> Basically a metaphor for internalized misogyny. The crab urge to want. <laughs> 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 the crab urge to be misogynistic. <laughs> yes. um, ineffective. The dopamine creates an itch that needs to be scratched. Sarah, itchy, itchy. Wait, I wrote that last night when I was fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I literally lost me. <laughs> I literally smoked. Uh, I, was, <laughs> I was reading this this morning, and I was like, so she went through this. And the only comment out of the eight pages of research is, 
itchy, itchy. <laughs> I literally <laughs> smoked a lot. Leave me alone. <laughs> itchy. <laughs> I was like, you know that thing of where you're like doing a research paper with someone? <laughs> that, that's your contribution. <laughs> you, you wrote itchy, itchy and smacked your name on the top. The teacher highlights it and says, WTF? Yeah. What is it? <laughs> Minus five points. Yes. Um, clickbait works in part because the promise of compelling <laughs> information activates a particular dopamine pathway. What did you smoke? <laughs> Weed. What, what do you think happened? I PCP. <laughs> and then I reviewed our notes for the podcast. That's why I didn't sleep. <laughs> I was up all night. <laughs> Have you ever smoked PCP? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't even know what that exactly means. <laughs> My primary care physician? Um, I don't know what DMT is either. DMT is a drug. <laughs> is it a horse tranquilizer? No. That's ketamine. Uh, DMT is like a psychedelic. No way. Yeah, DMT is a psychedelic. PCP is an illegal street drug that usually comes from a white powder. Oh, my God. What is it? It's um, known as angel dust. Oh, that's what people mean when they say angel dust. I've been using that so wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Tinkerbell sprinkled on Peter Pan. I thought angel dust was Coke. I thought angel dust was Victoria's Secret scent. (laughs) Yes. Oh, my God. You go to Victoria's Secret and get a body mist that says angel dust? You're just high as fuck (laughs) all the time. Beyond words. (laughs) Yes. Wait, so what is the, what is DMT? Yes, yeah, it's a psychedelic. DMT occurs naturally. Oh, you're, you were right. It's a hallucinogenic tryptamine drug. Yeah. Sometimes referred to as Dimitri. The drug produces effects similar to those of psychedelics, like LSD and magic mushrooms. Damn, you're so smart. Yeah. See, guys? Back to, um... Back itch- clickbait. Itchy, itchy. Um... <laughs> Dopamine is released and creates that itch that can only be scratched by obtaining the promised information. Biting the hook, i.e. obtaining the information, doesn't truly give us great pleasure. What it gives us is the relief from that itch from not clicking the link. Um, and Me this just edging myself in my bedroom, <laughs> like, don't fucking click it, don't click it. Rocking back and forth on your jeans team, <laughs> yeah. looking at clickbait. <laughs> Watching Mr. Beast videos. Yes. <laughs> resisting the urge to click it. <laughs> Exiting the video, like, when there's five minutes left. Yeah. Yeah. Guess we'll never know what Jake Paul drove into. Um, in this way, it can be considered a kind of negative reinforcement. Yeah. Do you want to talk about the Vegas effect? I would love to talk about the Vegas effect. Um, when we are put in a state of anticipation, dopamine is released, which encourages our seeking behavior. We have a hard time resisting the urge to scratch that itch. Many shows end in cliffhangers for this reason. To some degree, our dopamine wanting system is activated when we are put into a state of anticipation. So I guess the Vegas effect, which is not explained, actually, by the way. Thank you so much, Stanley, for the research. Uh-huh. Um, I bet that's just like gambling. The vi- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's yeah, like gambling. you're always waiting for, mm-hmm. and it's, it's a perpetual addictive cycle. Yeah. That makes sense. I always think about like, so I've been to like AA meetings and I imagine Narcotics Anonymous is very similar. I can't imagine what a gambling addiction, like sort of focus group looks like. Because it's different, I would feel like from substance where it's like, you know the high that that substance is going to give you and it's comforting and familiar versus like gambling is like, you never know. What's that meme of the guy that's picking underground and he gives up? And he was this far away from the the gold or the crystals. Yeah. That uh, is gambling addiction. That is so crazy. So, I mean, yeah, the Vegas effect makes sense. (laughs) Um, While its origins might not point to this, now clickbait is used for one capital purpose that we're all familiar with, making money. Woo! Mm -hmm. Getting clicks, engagement, that sort of thing. Uh, When the amount of viewers has become synonymous with the number of dollars going into your bank account, clickbait is the perfect way to increase your income. And you know what? It is a... Trick of the trade. Mm -hmm. You have to do it to a certain degree to be successful on YouTube. Because I watched this whole video that, um, what's his name? (laughs) His, uh, the account is Veritasium. Mm -hmm. Uh, they have 12 million subscribers. And the title of the video is Clickbait is Unreasonably Effective. And he goes on to talk about how he had this, made this video of, throwing a basketball with some spin on it yeah. from the top of a dam mm-hmm. like down into a river versus like just dropping it straight down he put a spin on it and it actually like flew like way and it skipped across the water cool video he titled it some physics term yeah like the gravitational pull of a da 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 that yeah. was the video someone found it uploaded it to facebook or yeah. reddit or it was one of those videos yeah. that ends up on the news for no reason uh-huh. <laughs> Dude, some dude threw a fucking basketball. <laughs> it was so sick. 
Like, that was it. And he went on to talk about how because they titled it, you'll never guess what this basketball does when thrown from the top of the Hoover Dam. Yeah. It got like 60 million views Mm -hmm. versus his original video was sitting at like 30,000. Oh, shit. It's like that is so integral to why YouTube is the way it is and like how to get views and how to get subscribers and how to make money is because of that. And that's a perfect example Mm -hmm. that is an unfortunate lesson he had to learn. Yeah. And um, luckily I think there's, there's, tools on youtube now to where he could go back and claim some monetization on those videos because it's his fucking video yeah um and it's not his fault that he didn't know how to market it Uh um so i think he managed to make some money off of it but it was like that fucking sucks dude yeah sucks well i mean that's how i made money off of vines is the content claiming has been around for a while but i mean i also think like it makes sense to some degree if you use a physics terms like term like most Americans have like a ninth or 10th grade reading level. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, if I'm like, you know, super excited to, you know, relax with a night of YouTube, I'm not like, you know, Pythagorean theorem, like, yeah. you know, edging. Like I'm right. looking up basketball trick, <laughs> big walls, <Yeah. laughs> throw far. <laughs> Slide on water. Very yes. cool. Yes. I get that. I, I think it's, yeah, you have to tap into how fucking stupid people are. Yeah, but I mean, I also wouldn't classify people as stupid if they don't know like a physics term. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that that might be a little bit skewed, but I understand why it's definitely frustrating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Um, where were we? Uh, making money. Um, the advent of sensational news. Oh, yeah. All right. In the 19th century. Now, this is some tea uh-huh. for all you communication majors out there or PR or whatever you bitches want to do. I was a comm major, so this was really interesting. In the 19th century, newspapers were fighting for circulation numbers the same way social media sites compete for eyeballs today. Joseph Pulitzer's New York World and William Randolph Hearst's New York Journal were engaged in a circulation war in the mid-1880s. Pulitzer purchased the New York World in 1884 and rapidly increased his newspaper circulation through the publication of scandalous stories. Mm -hmm. He earned the dubious honor of being the pioneer of yellow journalism, which I'm sure you studied in advertising. Maybe, bit. but I don't remember. Yell journalism is um, based upon sensationalism and like crude exaggeration of storylines or people or yeah. just clickbait, basically early generation of clickbait. Soon enough, he had a competitor in the field when Hearst acquired the New York Journal in 1885. After one point, the two newspapers had neck-to-neck sales. In a bid to outdo the other, they started over-dramatizing and altering the news to fit into story ideas that editors thought would stir most interest for the public. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't even... This is where we see the skew from accurate news reporting to what's going to sell the most. Yeah. And that's a scary thought. Mm -hmm. Like, this has been going on since, like, turn of the century, like, 1800s to 1900s. Yeah. Scary. That is crazy. The um, Stanley provided an example from the uh, web. It said, th- so this is like a really old like newspaper article. It says, woman jumps from Brooklyn Bridge, survives, mad leap, money gone and alone. She determined to die. That's, I mean. I'm going to read that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to read that too. <clears throat> I mean, I can Especially resonate. if it's 1887. Exactly. And I love Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorite boroughs. <laughs> yeah. But hopefully she was okay. Oh, wait, yeah, she survived. Hey, Mm -hmm. good for her. Good for her. I mean, I don't want to say how high the Brooklyn Bridge is, but... Do you know? No, I mean, like, I imagine if... Sorry, if you... I mean, you can jump off bridges and, like, it's fun sometimes. But if it's into water... But I wonder what the height would have to be for it to be, like, cement. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if the Brooklyn Bridge height is, like, enough to make it feel like cement. Mm. Or, like, wet cement. (laughs) It's just the Hollywood Walk of Fame. <laughs> yes. you just like land with like, your feet and hands on it. Um, so this is Bal- Battle of the Yellow Kids. Um, Pulitzer found a surefire way to boost. Is this the same Pulitzer Prize guy? Yeah. Oh, shit. Pulitzer found a surefire way to boost his newspaper's circulation. He introduced a popular comic strip in the newspaper, Running the Adventures of a Kid in the Streets of New York. It was created by Richard F. Outla- Outclat. Cult? Outcult. He later came to be known as the Yellow Kid since he wore an oversized yellow nightshirt. Is this like Curious George? No. Oh, no, it's just a bald kid with a big yellow dress on. Early variations of Caillou. <laughs> yes. In a yellow raincoat. I was going to say this is Trixie Mattel in a nightgown. <laughs> 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 
I mean, it's a cute comic. So for everyone at home, it's just this bald kid holding a chalice that's dripping. And then he's wearing a big yellow t- dress that's long sleeve. It that says, uh, well, Holly G, here's to you. I'll put him up here. That's Cause, hilarious. Because you bitches are going to yell at us. Can you imagine? Like, I know that our brains are, like, fried from the internet and, like, what we consider interesting nowadays. But can you imagine that this comic is just so fucking funny? Yeah. Because, like, you don't see comics all the time. People are like, holy shit! Yeah. <laughs> it's so good! Have you seen the yellow kid? Oh, he's so good! Um, they often use the yellow kid to sensationalize stories and discredit the leads of other newspapers. It was also used to sway public opinion on important issues such as the Spanish-American War. Can you imagine this Caillou lookalike trying to sway you on the Spanish-American War? Commenting on an inter... <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> He's yeah. like that... Um, that little uh, paper clip that shows up at like, <laughs> the, the side of your... F- <laughs> yes, <laughs> except it's Caillou in a yellow dress. Yeah. He's like, damn, <laughs> this sucks. War is bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Caillou. Go America. <laughs> Soon there was a yellow kid version of everything from playing cards, uh, playing cards, pins, dolls, ice cream, bottle openers, even cigarettes. Eventually, Hearst offered Outcult an outrageously high fee to bring the kid over to his New York journal. Outcalled accepted the offer. This move fueled the already heated rivalry between Hearst and Pulitzer. Both of them started giving their competing yellow kids more and more space. Finally, the competition became so intense that these newspapers were turning daily boring news into groundbreaking events. And we see that today as well. Mm -hmm. Yellow journalism and the decline of journalistic integrity is the next section. Critics tried again and again to pin a reputation on the paper's sensationalistic, exaggerated, ill-researched techniques which propagated the trend of fake news. They termed this kind of reporting as nude journalism. I literally don't know anything other than this. And when you find something that is an expose, yeah. it feels it feels so like, oh, all right, what's the agenda behind this? Yeah. You know, like I don't have faith in journalism at all anymore to just tell the story. Mm-hmm. Like it's always like, okay, what's the envelope they're trying to push? Who paid them? To, who gave them the budget or the, the funding to make this? Yeah. Even stuff on, um, I feel like some of the most honest journalism I've seen um, is stuff like anti-Catholic church stuff. Yeah. Have you seen that Spotlight, that movie Spotlight? No. Or there was a Netflix series called The Keepers that's all about exposing the abuses that go on in the Catholic church. Yeah. I feel like that's pretty, that's expose for the sake of expose. It's yeah. It's like revealing some of the most awful shit that goes on yeah. in, the, in the interiors of the Catholic church. I don't think you need a, a mission or a... a alternative alter your motive to like do something like that but i feel like a lot of time when it's an expose on a singular person or something like that it's very malicious and it's yeah i mean yeah um and also like i was looking it up because you just reminded me so there's something called like the media bias chart where you're talking Mm -hmm. about like how many publications like lean are trying to convince you of something and if you look at the media bias chart it like has like a chart where it shows like all like cnn and like where it lies is like it's more left and it's trying to like you know, value and reliability and versus like Fox News is on the way right. So like there's an agenda behind it. And then there's some publications that are more like in the middle, um, like the uh, AP. I'm not sure what that is. And then Associated Press. Yeah. Associated Press. (laughs) This is how little I know about news. The only time I watch news is when I hang out with my parents over Thanksgiving and they don't have news either. Yeah. I have no clue what's going on. No, No, Twitter's just a constant doom scroll. Yeah. And it's also not, I feel like Twitter's not informative. Mm-hmm. Twitter is fear-mongering. Yeah. Where it's like, well, the world's ending. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> it's like, here's a GoFundMe. I don't have any. <laughs> no, exactly. I was, oh, fuck. I just blanked on what I was going to say. This is wild. Yeah, I know. Like, But you can, I mean, it makes sense. Like, Fox, Fox News is on the way right when it comes to, um, you know, it contains inaccurate, fabricated information, and it leans right. Yeah. Contains mm-hmm. misleading info. Mm-hmm. Selective, incomplete, unfair persuasion, propaganda, or other issues. This is tea. Oh, but then we talk about like propaganda. Like I didn't realize this. So you know, like back in like I mean, like history, we would like study like propaganda from like the forties and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I yeah, stupidly didn't realize like most superhero movies. Like Captain America is definitely propaganda. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Isn't that wild? And it feels like again, like you can't even enjoy the basic things because it's like, what am I being fed? Yeah. Wake up, sheeple. You know, I leave the movie liking America, and I'm like, God, they did it again. (laughs) 
<laughs> Shit. <laughs> the only time I feel like really proud to be an American is um, the Olympics. The Olympics, yep. dude. That's like the only time where I'm like, or when I hear like a British person like insulting America. <laughs> Do you realize how stupid British, uh, what the fucking Americans are, or something like that? Yeah. And I'm like, yes, we do realize how stupid we are. Yeah. You know? Well, at least <laughs> <stop. laughs> yes. I miss that meme. I know. Just bring it back. I will. That shit was so funny, dude. God. It's always funny when people from other countries are like, I don't think Americans realize. It's like we are looking in a mirror. We realize all of our imperfections. Yeah. Like, you don't have to tell us shit. <laughs> yes. We understand. Yes. <laughs> well, anyway. Mm hmm. The saga of producing salacious stories continued, and as mediums progressed, the comic strip advanced into mechanisms for creating headlines that were clickbaity for attracting the attention of the netizens. And I just realized a netizen is an internet citizen. It is users of the internet. So that is a portmanteau. Yeah. A net netizen. citizen. Netizen. But to assert that clickbait is some nasty new disease cooked up by techies of the web age is as short-sighted and ill-informed as clickbait itself. Mm-hmm. How good is that? What a great sentence. Yeah. I mean, I think like, uh, yeah, I mean, since the internet is new, you're like, oh, we made this. No, it's been around since like the dawn of capitalism. Yeah. We've been manipulating each other mm -hmm. since the yes. dawn of time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, you want to talk about clickbait on YouTube? Mm -hmm. um, so clickbait on YouTube, such a large topic. Oh, this is what Stanley wrote with so many subgenres. Uh, YouTube has the biggest platform that uses clickbait on a daily basis with users and YouTubers using the technique to glean views and YouTube hierarchy. Famous creators like David Dobrik, who are known for using his money, who is known for using his money to prank his friends and engage in outrageous activities and purchases, used clickbait quite a lot early in his career. In fact, his fan base turned it into an inside joke, and now he sells merchandise with the words written on it. Yeah, he has clickbait merch. Mm -hmm. That, from an academic standpoint, is so scary. What in what way? You have used clickbait on your audience and manipulated their opinion of being duped yeah into a positive one yeah where they therefore buy merchandise yeah based on you manipulating their opinions and yeah. their, their dopamine I mean, intake i would just like assume it's like the same thing well lump it in with like tana mojo's like canceled merch yeah she's been canceled which is an objectively bad thing mm -hmm. you can ar argue it's effect effect oh my god argue it. it's effect Efficacy. Efficacy. Oh, my God. Sorry. I'm, like, having a... But you, so she's, like, breaking the fourth wall. Like, exactly. you know, canceled, clickbait, cringe, mid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a jacket coming out that just says mid. <laughs> and I would buy it. <laughs> yes. Actually, mid and cringe would be, like... <laughs> I would buy that. Yes. <laughs> but, like, why? Is this some hyper-aware post, post, post irony thing of, like... I know what you're doing. Yeah. But you're still buying it. Yeah. I mean, it's like in Fleabag where the main character looks yep. at the camera. Like yeah. you're basically looking at the camera when you sell merch that says clickbait. We're on all it. Deadpool here. Yeah. <laughs> David Dobrik is Deadpool and I've always said that. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to break his legs. Never works. <laughs> I tried to burn him horrendously. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> never, never. <laughs> now he's back to normal. Yeah. So a lot of family YouTubers use clickbait as well because of their mainly young demographic of viewers and followers. They'll promote false information, use bright colors, big block words, and fake thumbnails to capture audiences. It's like we're all 12. Yeah, we are basically all 12. We're Coco Melon kids. <laughs> if you use like this color blocks, like from like a children's like play set to like uh, put it on David Dobrik's vlogs, yeah. I'd still watch it. Yeah. I'd be like, yeah, A, B, C, D. Yeah, I love this one. Yes. <laughs> I love how it's 4 minutes, 20 seconds. Yes. It's so good. 69 seconds. Oh. <laughs> That's how it feels. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like an 11-year-old middle schooler yes. <laughs> doing Fortnite dances watching <laughs> David Dobrik videos. <laughs> oh. It's all the asbestos. It is! <laughs> it's, all... it's altering my brain chemistry. <laughs> they also use red arrows and circles to point out parts of the thumbnail image. Which I like those. <laughs> ben reported as an example as infantilizing and manipulating. Hey. I love being manipulated. And I love being uh, treated like a baby. <laughs> yes. Honestly, yeah, I kind of do like being treated like a baby. If I'm talking to someone and they don't smile at me, I will start to cry. <laughs> yeah. I have this thing, too, of like, and I catch myself in it when it happens, especially on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I get very comfortable with people telling me what I should think. Yeah. You should care about this. You should talk about this. You should think this. You don't think this? And it's like, this is a larger discussion of, do you trust the internet and the general sentiment on the internet to be good? 
Mm -hmm. You know, like to care about the right things and to speak up about the right things and to donate to the right places. I feel like the moral compass, we've talked about this before, the moral Mm -hmm. compass online is pretty decent. Yeah. Right? Almost to a fault. Like we're social justice warriors to a fault where it's like y'all are begging us to speak up about things that we're not informed about. Yeah. We could spread more misinformation by doing that. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of danger and harm in that potentially. (laughs) But at the same time, I listen to the internet a little little too much sometimes where, you know, if it's the circles and the red arrows and it's the Mm -hmm. shit you should care about, websites and accounts like that, I really take that shit to heart. Yeah. And I catch myself being like, I should formulate my own fucking opinion. Yeah. Why don't, why do I, no, 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 no. I don't want to listen to people telling me that this is what I should think and care about. Like, yeah. And I know that that is where a lot of dangerous shit comes into. Like, that's how QAnon got started. The whole yeah. do your own research. Yeah. Well, what research are you doing? Yeah. You know, like that's, it's very, I get frustrated with myself sometimes because I just kind of listen to whatever Twitter has to say. Yeah. And that is so <laughs> scary. I think it's like, yeah, you really do have to like form your own, you have to like know what is, you know, what's being, so, uh, you have to be like somewhat intelligent. Yeah. Because I mean, like I could be like, is having this many freckles normal? And I Google it and I'd like, yeah, that's a perfect amount. But it's like, is, uh, but I could also phrase it like I have too many freckles and then an article's going to pop up about how I have too many freckles and likely skin cancer. Right. Like it's like, if it's a matter of phrasing it. Right. And if you already have a pessimistic or like attitude. Bias. You're, yeah. you're going to find that um, on the internet. You're right. going to find like so many articles about whatever you're trying to find on the internet. Yeah. It's Mm -hmm. a scary thing, too, especially with clickbait. You know, like, you're going to click on the stuff that most applies to you. Yeah, I mean, we talked about this earlier. Like, I Googled, like, I'm having, I'm fatigued, but I'm also having, like, a racing heart. And the first options that showed up were heart attack, you know, arrhythmia, cancer. And literally, like, anxiety was, like, the last one. And I could have, I I feel like anxiety was, it's like, duh, you know. But it shows you all the worst possible things it could be. Fear stoking. Yeah. yeah. So now you're properly freaked out and then you find out about anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. I do hate, I, I hate when people use red arrows in circles and videos. Yeah. Unless it's like a UFO sighting where like right. the UFO dips behind a cloud and like you barely see it, then yeah. But I hate when they're just there for like no reason. Yeah. Like there was one that I remember like a long time ago. It was this like side by side picture of this woman doing yoga and she's like up on her forearms and she's pregnant in one of them. And then in the next one, she's not. And so, like, it was like, you'll never believe what happened to this woman. Where did it go? And it circled her belly, at, like, both times. I was like, yeah, she gave birth. <laughs> Holy That's shit. That's what is different about her now. Yeah. Like, But it's crazy that, I don't know, maybe they were being ironic. Well, that's it, too, is, like, they did that for a purpose. Someone sat down and edited yes. a red circle <laughs> with a red arrow on that. And you have to go into YouTube and do select custom thumbnail. Yes. They did that shit. Yes. It's like, ah. It is kind of funny, too. So annoying. Even the popular video game Fortnite, which came to a popularity a few years ago, has created a community that thrives off of clickbait. In fact, most players of the game and streamers use clickbait to manipulate young viewers into adding to the popularity and wealth. Let's go! Manipulating young people online. (laughs) They push false promises or scare little kids into liking videos by saying, like this video or you'll have bad luck. Oh, dude, I see that sometimes. Oh, my gosh. Remember the originals on, like, Twitter where it'd be like, uh, it'd be like... (laughs) It's like, <laughs> Twitter it, be like, it's like, uh, retweet this or you won't go into heaven. God saw you scroll. Oh, I love those. They're just like guilt tripping you. Yeah. Also, why would God abide by that law? God saw you scroll. Oh, <laughs> he adds you to the naughty list. He's keeping tabs in heaven. Just another notch on his desk. <laughs> <laughs> He's got tabs open. Yes. He's using Google Chrome. Wait, my Excel sheet. No, 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 no. <laughs> so there are different types of YouTube clickbait, and Stanley provided some options. The first one, if you want to pull it up, is animal fights. I don't know if I want to pull that up. Oh, no, it's it's perfectly tame. So for all of you listening at home, this um, example is oh. an elephant with obviously fake blood, and it's wrapped um, up by a huge boa constrictor, but I mean like a huge, huge boa that can wrap around an elephant. And then it says 14 craziest animal fights caught on camera. It's clearly not real. 14 million views. Also, I seriously doubt that there's a, a snake that big, like as big as an elephant. Yeah. Or the elephant's really small. We don't know about proportion sizes here. These are the ones that get me. Okay. You won't believe what happens next. And then on the image for you won't believe what happens next is just four children looking at this man holding a sea turtle. 
Fish. A fish. My guess is the fish jumps out of his hands, or the girl eats the fish, mm. <laughs> or the, the children stomp it to death. <laughs> yes. Take a bite out of it raw. Yes. There's yeah. another one that says, uh, moments if we're not filmed, no one would believe. And so it's uh, just a picture of a woman starting like a floor routine during gymnastics. Mm. I mean, I think a lot of gymnastics is actually pretty impressive. Not in a you won't believe it sort of way. It's yeah. like, yeah, maybe they trained for this their whole <laughs> life and they're really good at it. I didn't see Gabby Douglas perform. Therefore, I don't like even yeah. acknowledge that she performed at all. <laughs> yeah. I'll believe it when I see it. Sure, Biden was elected. Yeah. yeah. Sleepy Joe. <laughs> this, this is the good shit. <laughs> the arrows in circle. For everyone at home. So for a lot of clickbait, they use like red arrows to like point to like the most bogus shit. Um, so one is like the hidden truth behind the Star Wars documentary. And then there's a picture of a Star Wars character and then another. Star- oh, my God. I can't describe this. Yeah. I've never watched Star Wars a day in my life. Yeah, <laughs> me either. It's so dumb and stupid. I don't even like it. Mm, and then also cleavage ass objectifying. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Where it's like a workout video, but it's like looking straight down the shirt of a woman who's like on her back doing like a yoga pose Dude, or something. this was so big on the Viners that moved to Instagram. Yeah. Like fucking, not Cle- Rudy Mancuso. Who's the other one that was just like, it was all this, like creepy yoga instructors that was so like rapey and like objectifying and just like the fact that it was ever considered comedy is so scary yeah and And that became the vine sense of humor um like falling down in like cleavage very much very much yeah yeah peaks lily lily ponds peaks has huge breasts he does famously (laughs) they've both got moles on them too <laughs> you gotta put a picture of Peaks up on the screen. Actually, I'll Google it. <laughs> no. I won't. Oh, put that away. <laughs> I've seen this actually. You've seen these dark Disney, the real stories behind whatever? Like the Frozen one? Yeah. That or like how Cinderella is like a scary German fairy tale. Well, Cinderella is a scary German fairy tale. Yeah. But the Disney version is like, ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, you can't sell, like, cutting off your feet to children. I mean, you could try. You won't believe how this girl lost her feet. <laughs> it's a you Disney wouldn't. movie. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you actually wouldn't. Okay, yeah. So that, um, I mean, clickbait is pretty unethical, but it's been around for forever, and it's just another thing used to sell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's no escaping it, so get used to it. I, I can't. would hope that you guys would be more aware of it now. Yeah. They're all perfectly aware, and we're just like repeating yeah, just everything. Really preaching to the choir. Just play this for your like sixty-year-old mother or yeah, something. Yeah. The next time she gets like her credit card stolen. And show them this as well. <laughs> <laughs> the media please. bias chart, please. Please show them the media bias chart. All right, guys. Loving you, missing you. Love you. Um, hopefully, I'm better in the next episode. But thank you guys for listening to Woo! Violating, Violating Community, Community Guidelines. Guidelines. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, Spotify, Apple Music, rate us five stars, leave us a comment, leave us a review, Please. leave us a funny story, mm-hmm. tell us that you love us and that we're very beautiful. And that you'd like to kiss us both on the lips. Yep. And also, just for everyone at home, we will be going on tour. Tour! Mm-hmm. Woo! <laughs> we will have <laughs> some Florida dates, the Northeast, a lot of Texas dates. And the Midwest. The Midwest. California. Sorry. You don't mm-hmm. get, so <laughs> get dates this You snooze, time. you lose. Yeah, sorry you chose to live there. <laughs> yes. Sucks for you. We chose to live here too. Yeah. <laughs> um, be looking out for those. Those would be late August, September, and October. We will be coming to maybe a city near you. Or Tickets go or... Your house. Yeah, we will come to your house. <laughs> we do birthday parties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you let us swim in the pool. Yes. Naked. Yeah. <laughs> In broad daylight. Tickets go on sale August 2nd, 2022. Mm-hmm. If you would like to come see us, please do. Yes. And we will see you there for everyone who buys tickets. Bye. Bye, y'all. Thank you. <laughs>